going viewers? Mr. Incredible is back and he's rolling with the punches, baby! Welcome to a tier list, ranking tier list specifically, and this is one requested by my uncle. Yes, my uncle requested this to me and he actually wrote it in a letter for me. So, let's actually read it and see what it is, because I don't even know what it is, I'm actually excited. Dear Incredibrony, my second favourite nephew, Aww. I would love you to do a ranking tier list on your YouTube channel of every single Disney live action remake. P.S. When Moana comes out, I will make you watch it with me. You know how I feel right now? Really, Uncle? That's how you're gonna do me? Fine, I'm doing this, not just, not really for you, but for my viewers. They deserve to know my opinion on this. Oh my gosh, why are we doing this? I suggest we should get into it. This is gonna be a tough one. Music, please. Okay. Well, viewers, so as you all know, Disney is a very beloved franchise and we love their films that we grew up watching or later in life. But if there's one thing about Disney I just never really understood was that why do we need live action remakes? And no, viewers, don't just comment down, oh, it's for the money, Incredible Brony, they need to stay rich. No. They're doing this just to show different perspectives of their movies because, you know, they have the rights to their movies and characters, so they deserve to make live action remakes instead of, you know, other people who want to make their own original perspective, you know, which is kind of interesting. But no, Disney's like, let us do it. We created the original, so we make the remake. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Why am I doing this? The Disney live action remakes, in my opinion, are just insulting and very boring watches okay but i will admit there is charm in a couple of them which is why we have five different categories we have the top which is really bad then we have the awful categories then we have the insulting ones then we have meh and finally actually enjoyable those are the only tier lists we have so let's get into this and with the talks of the new live action moana coming i am really i'm just really insulted like why? First of all, that film came out in 2016 and it's already a beautiful success and it's very phenomenal. Why do we need a live action remake? Yes, I know Dwayne Johnson's gonna play Maui again, but, but what's the point? And we all know they're gonna make characters like Hey Hey and Tamatoa look awful. That's what they're gonna do. Okay, so there's just no reason. <sighs> this is why animation is better than live action to me personally. It actually speaks more. The characters are more expressive and I feel like it just works better in the fantasy world, whereas in the real world, it's very hard to find believable. That's why animation works better for me personally. I'm just saying, viewers. But anyway, let's get into this. Starting off the tier list, we have, oh my gosh, they start off with the worst. Beauty and the Beast. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to talk about the plot since I'm sure y'all already know how the story goes, you know. Uh, Princess is cursed by this spell that makes him turn into this horrifying beast. He lives in this castle. Belle is, you know, likes to sing in town a lot. Everyone judges because of how different she is. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, we have Cogsworth. We have Lumiere. We have the Mrs. Potts. You know how it goes, viewers. I don't need to explain. Oh my gosh. This is just boring and I really despise it. The songs are just very uncatchy, uh, the, the, the setups are very unoriginal, the p pacing is boring, all the characters are forgettable, none of them look good in my personal opinion, and I think this movie kind of proves that um, the actor who plays um, Hermione Granger from Harry Potter just does, should just stay in, just should, doesn't really know how to sing, like, oh my gosh, Emma Watson, you were so bad in this film. Um, Gaston didn't feel iconic and narcissistic anymore, and I don't know why Disney made LeFou um, gay. It d did not make sense because of the time period they were set in. I have nothing wrong with you making a character gay, but especially if the character already exists, why change them? It just doesn't make sense. So yeah, Disney, you need to try hard. You're just doing too much. 
So yeah, Beauty and the Beast, really bad. Just don't watch it. Watch the animated one. <sighs> Next we have, oh my gosh, Maleficent. Yeah, Angelina Jolie, I love you, but this was such a boring film. This thing is just awful. Like, why make an iconic villain from Sleeping Beauty, you know, seem like a misunderstood person? Like, what's the point? And um, the only thing good about it is that I will say some of the locations do look pretty, but that's it. I, I don't care about the story. I don't care about the characters. Nothing about it is just enjoyable for me. And I don't know how it made my uncle cry. Like, my uncle actually enjoys these films. I don't know why. What is wrong with y'all? And then we have, oh my gosh. And then we have the sequel to Maleficent. Honestly, just as bad, really. So yeah, also going in the awful category. What else is that to say? Okay, then we have, okay, then we have, okay, now we have a bit of a decent one. Alice in Wonderland. I actually don't mind this one. I think this one is actually not insulting in the slightest. I think it's kind of fun. I think the actors do very well playing the characters. I think Johnny Depp is amazing as the Mad Hatter for obvious reasons. Um, I think the villain, Queen of Hearts, is handled greatly. Um, and I think the locations feel special. It does feel like I'm on an acid trip because the original Alice in Wonderland is one of the weirdest films ever. Like there, it feels like you're on an acid trip almost. I think that feel, the animation does it better, but the live action one, I say is still a good retelling of Alice in Wonderland and it still feels original in some places. It doesn't feel like a retelling of the original film. And I like that. So yeah, Alice in Wonderland, I'll put it in the enjoyable section. I find it actually enjoyable. So yeah, there we go, Alice in Wonderland. That's not bad, not bad. Oh boy, Alice through the looking glass, however. Mmm, 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 mmm. No, just, no. Dull and time consuming in a bad way. This is so bad. I did not like this film. I would have liked it if they made Mad Hatter evil, but no, they just made him kind of sideline and go berserk. It didn't feel right for me. And the villain was just just forgettable. It, this just did not feel right. Why make a sequel? You already made a live action film. There's no need for a sequel. Oh, okay, let's continue. Oh no. Now we have Aladdin. Oh my gosh. Okay, this film is definitely going in awful. Oh, by the way, um, Alice Through the Looking Glass goes in um, really bad. Yeah, really bad. Okay, okay. Aladdin, however. Okay, um, this one isn't terrible, but it is pretty insulting. I think the portrayal of Aladdin is doesn't feel right. He doesn't feel heroic. He doesn't feel like the street rat that we like. Um, Jasmine, I feel like they made her way too confident. She was already confident in the uh, animated film. I don't, I feel like they just, I feel like they just made her way too, like, uh, confident in my opinion and way too much of a leader. This made me think, why is the film called Jasmine, not Aladdin? Because if anything, Jasmine feels like the real hero of the film and the only main character. Uh, Jafar was a pretty boring villain. Like, I thought he was amazing and hilarious in the original film and actually scary at times but in this film he was just hilarious in the wrong way i just couldn't take him seriously will smith as the genie he was actually serviceable he really was i think he did a decent job but when you compare him to robin williams it's pretty obvious which one is better so yeah um aladdin it, i'm putting it in the insulting category it, it could have been worse but it really could have been better it really could have what's next Dumbo, my mother's very first film she watched as a kid. No joke, this was the first film my, my mum watched as a kid because her father took her to the cinema for the first time to watch Dumbo actually, which was really, really cute. They were playing at the cinema for some reason, I don't know why, but my mum was lucky to watch it, even though the film came back in, what, the 1940s, I think. Um, yeah, Dumbo, however, the live action remake, it's, I mean, it's actually different to the animated one. There's actually more humans in it because there really aren't any humans in the 1940s Dumbo. All we really have is just talking crows, a talking mouse, uh, pink elephants, clowns, and elephants. That's it. That's really all we get for characters. So the film did an admirable attempt to actually put humans in it. And I think the two kids that bond with baby Dumbo, I thought was cute. I think that was a cute moment in the, mo in the film. Um, and and uh, the father of the kids, which is a play by Michael Keaton, um, he did pretty good. Danny DeVito was funny. I think Danny DeVito was really funny in the film. He actually felt like the most 
realistic character for me personally. Um, but um, everything else was just kind of forgettable, really. And the reunite and the re and the reunization. Ah, oh, the reunion with Dumbo and his mother. Thank God. Why did I say that so weirdly? It was it was nice, but I feel like the animated film would have done that a lot better if they actually reunited. So yeah, Dumbo, I'm putting it in the meh category. Like, it's fine, but like I just don't feel like watching it again. I just don't. And then we have <sighs> Cinderella. This film is just is just awful. Uh, Cinderella, just no. I'm not even gonna talk about it. I don't. I do not want to talk about Cinderella at all. Cinderella: A True Story was was fun, honestly, and Enchanted was amazing. But Cinderella, Disney Cinderella, just why? Just, just why? Like what's that? You're gonna be ruined Tangled, The Princess and the Frog. How about Snow White and Seven Dwarfs? What about that? Huh, Disney? Are you not done yet? Oh my gosh. Oh. Uh, and now we have Mulan. Mulan. This is really bad. Like, really, really bad. Oh my gosh. Um, I know the whole controversy thing with Mulan but 2020, but we're not going to get into that at all. Uh, the original Mulan is a very inspirational film. Like, characters actually go through development. Mulan has to work hard to be a warrior. And she actually has to try really hard to hide her identity. But in this film, it... it Everything was way too easy for her. And none of the characters were memorable at all. And we don't even get iconic characters like Mushu or um or um Lee or or Yao and Po. Those characters were my favourite in the Mulan and original film. But this film has none of them. So yeah, this is just so bad. So bad. And the cinematography is just so awkward to look at. How did this film come out in 2020? There's no way. Just why? Okay, next one. Uh, the Lion King. There's just no emotion in this film. If I want to watch an animal documentary, I'll watch a David Attenborough film. Ugh. Yeah, The Lion King. It's awful. It's just awful, really. <coughs> Okay, almost choked there. Yeah, um... I don't know what else to say. There's no emotion. None of the characters feel special to me. And there's just no emotion. Again, there's no emotion. And this is one of those films where it's like a scene-for-scene, scene, literal repeat of the original film. There's like nothing new added to the table. What? Okay, uh, next we have Lady and the Tramp. Okay, Lady and the Tramp is actually not terrible, but it's not that good either. So I'm gonna put it in meh, like with Dumbo. Like, I think they did capture a bit of the heartful moments, but it's obvious that they're literally inferior to the, to the original animated film, you know? I don't know, that's all I can say really. I don't hate this film, but I also really can't stand it sometimes. Uh, next we have... <sighs> you know what, I'm gonna skip this one. I'm gonna save this one for last. Okay, this one is not too bad. Cruella. Cruella de Vil. Cruella de Vil. My mother loves Cruella de Vil as a character. Um, she is really, really disgusting and scary and pretty crazy in the 101 Dalmatians films, especially the 1960s one. I really do like her as a villain. She is intimidating, she is crazy, and the way she just likes to smoke and just make, just drop her ashes all over the place, that makes you want to punch her. Like, she is crazy for a villain, and I really did like her. And the movie Cruella, I was excited at first, but when I realized it was going to be an origin story to how Estella became Cruella, I was like, oh, it's going to be one of those, it's going to be like Maleficent, isn't it? And you know what? It wasn't as bad as Maleficent. They actually kind of gave Cruella a, a reason to be so crazy. Like, her mother did die because of Dalmatian. That's a reason to hate a Dalmatian, in my personal opinion. But then there was a twist at the end, which was really dumb. And Horace and Jasper were played fine, but I feel like Cruella's attitude did not feel earned in the end of the film. So I didn't really feel like calling her Cruella anymore. I still call her Estella. So Emma Stone, you are not Cruella. You're just not. 
I'm sorry, Emma Stone, you're just not. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I, I feel like Coretta could have been more, but um, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is how you do an origin film for a villain that you love. So yeah, Cruella is just meh, really. I don't think it's terrible, but it, it could have been more. Okay, then we have, oh, 101 Dalmatians from 1996. This one is great. I, this is actually the, this is actually the only live action remake of a Disney film that I actually really like. This one was done very well. The charm is there. The Dalmatian puppies are adorable. Uh, Cruella de Vil is great. Glenn Close is the superior Cruella de Vil. This is the one, this is how she should be. And, and, um, Roger and Mary feel like a beautiful class couple. And especially since Roger is played by the legend, by legend himself, Jeff Daniels, Harry from Dumb and Dumber. This is how you do a film. And it's also produced by John Hughes, who did the Home Alone movies. So you can tell he's able to do the whole beautiful family charming whilst having some scary elements to it. And I love Horace and Jasper in the film. They were done to a T absolutely brilliantly. I loved them so much. So yeah, I really like this film. The best character for me is the Dalmatian known as Dipstick. He's the one that has the um, black tip on his tail. I don't know why, I always loved him. Since Patch is my favorite in the 101 Dalmatians film, uh, Dipstick is my favorite in this film. So there you go, so yeah. 101 Dalmatians is actually enjoyable, really enjoyable. It's the best live action remake, without a doubt. That's how you do it. Okay, then we have 102 Dalmatians. Yeah, it's just a pointless sequel. It's insulting, that's what I'm gonna say. It's insulting, that's it. Um, then we have The Jungle Book. The Jungle Book, I find this film hard to believe. Now, the, ninth, the original 1960s one, I think, um, I like it. I don't mind it. I mean, I don't love it, but I do like it enough, you know? But the live action remake, dude, like, what, there was like, I feel like the visuals were good, but I think people praise this film too hard. Like, a lot of reviews are saying that this is actually a great live action film because they couldn't tell it was CGI. I don't understand that. I can tell it's CGI all the time. And in all honesty, I think all the celebrity voice acting was pretty mediocre at best. Like, Scarlett Johansson's car was, ugh. Um, Bill Murray as Baloo was just serviceable. Christopher Walken as Louis was just, no, that is, no. Why would you make Christopher Walken voice Louis? That did not make sense at all. And the actor who plays Mowgli is awful. I did not, I was not a fan of his portrayal as Mowgli. They should have gotten a good kid actor. And I know Disney can do better than that. And I know kid actors can be great in The Woman in Black and The, and the Witch films. All the kid actors are amazing in those films. And um, Alex Vinton, who plays little Andy Barkley in Child's Play, again, amazing. That's how you do a kid actor. But in this film, the Mowgli kid actor was awful. No one else is saying it because they're scared to admit it. Yeah, The Jungle Book is just awful. I really don't like it. It's awful. Just, just leave it alone. Okay, then we have Pete's Dragon. Pete's Dragon, Pete's Dragon. Honestly, this one, this one is actually good. It's only good with the characters. That's it. Everything else about this film is just meh. So yeah, um, I like the characters in Pete's Dragon, but everything else is just a meh, really. That's it. That's all I can say. Um... Oh. Um. I, um. I don't know about this one. I don't know if I should classify this as a Disney live action remake, because it really isn't a remake. It's more of an original movie. And that's Christopher Robin with Ewan McGregor. This one is actually pretty great. As someone who loves Winnie the Pooh and actually grew up watching The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh a lot as a kid. I actually think this film is really good. I think the way they portray Christopher Robin as an adult who's trying to work hard, but then doesn't have time for his family and then has to relive his childhood in a way. I actually think that was done very well. Don't need to, you need to let go of the, you need to try and not worry about the future and don't let go of the past, you know? Be with your family, you know? And love them for who they are. I really like that. And I think the portrayal of all the characters were done very well. 
especially Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, and Piglet, and Eeyore. I think all of them were just done very well. So yeah, Christopher Robin was was pretty good. I, I really liked it. This, Alice in Wonderland, and 101 Dimensions are the only three live-action Disney films that I would consider very good. That's it. And now we saved the... <sighs> well, okay, I did say the Beauty and the Beast was the worst live-action film, but I mean, I think they saved the worst for the most biggest pain in the bar. This right here, <laughs> oh my gosh, oh, this is gonna be tough. Oh, are you ready, viewers? Are y'all ready? Here we go. It is now time to talk about Pinocchio. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna be talking about this for a little while. Pinocchio. Now, this is just the biggest dump ever. This is the definition of taking a dump on a classic film that you just don't ruin like that. I don't know what Disney was thinking. They clearly know that this was going to suck. They knew it was going to suck. They, 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 they didn't even try. And of course they would ask the director Robert Zemeckis to direct this film because he knows how to direct great films. Who Framed Roger Rabbit, for example. Need I say more? Oh, I mean, he also directed A Christmas Carol, so yeah. Oh my gosh. But, um, yeah, uh, I don't know what else to say. It's just, this film is just a big piece of crap, and I despise it on every single level. Now, a Pinocchio of True Stories was one thing of 2022, but this one just took the cake for the absolute worst adaption for a beloved children's film. Pinocchio, fun fact for you, is actually the second animated film ever. This came out... The original 1940 animated film came out three years after Snow White and Seven Dwarfs, making it the second animated film ever. And of course, it would be Disney's, what, 16th live action film? What? And you know what? This film deserves all the reviews and critics, which is giving it such a big thumbs down. And I appreciate that. It's like people are finally seeing how really bad these live action remakes are. And I know for a fact that Moana and The Little Mermaid are not going to do well because all the CGI characters that we love like Sebastian and Tamatoa are gonna be so insultingly Ugh! I despise it. I really do viewers Ugh. Luckily we got an amazing Pinocchio film later that year in December, which is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, but still 2022 was such a crazy year for Pinocchio and but I have to be honest with you What is my favorite Pinocchio? That is still the Pinocchio in Shrek. Yeah, my favorite Pinocchio is the one in Shrek, mostly because he's got a really funny attitude and he was really funny in Shrek the Third and he wears a thong in Shrek too. I'm just saying, that is iconic. But this film is just insulting on every single level. Uh, Tom Hanks as Geppetto was just boring. Making Figaro a CGI cat was just wrong. Um, Cleo looked terrifying in CGI. Um, Honest John looked okay, but his voice was really annoying. I did not like what Keegan Michael Key gave him. It did, didn't work for me at all. Pinocchio, I think, looked fine at first, but then his eyes just did not work for me. I really don't like them. And this film feels like a beat for beat, the same repeat of the original film. The only changes is just a little thing, but they don't really work. Like Pinocchio having a love interest. Um, Pinocchio learning his true and not actually having the blue fairy help him at all i don't know it just it, they were trying they they weren't trying they weren't that's the problem viewers and um i don't know viewers i, I really despise these live action remakes a lot of the time and this is easily the worst of the worst it really deserves to be at the top of really bad just don't watch these live action remakes just don't leave them alone viewers you're just you're just you're literally insulting yourself animation is superior in every single way viewers and you know that and if disney ever says they're gonna make a pixar movie into a live action remake then viewers my youtube my youtube channel might become to an end i i'm not kidding i might get rid of this channel just because of disney live action remakes <laughs> probably not but still what is your least favorite and kind of favorite live action remake and do you think they're really that bad let me know below but i shall see you all in the next video i don't know when but if you enjoyed this particular video leave a like on it don't forget to subscribe if you're interested follow me on instagram link down below until then stay positive keep calm stay safe be incredible and as always brony 
on. Peace.